What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about another episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly. And in all honesty, I do have to say this just might be the worst week of Chicago Bulls basketball I have experienced over the course of making this YouTube channel. Now that's a very big statement to make, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, I did make this channel when the Bulls were pretty much tanking from that point. But at least then we kind of expected and we knew what the Chicago Bulls kind of were. They were a borderline 10 seed team that maybe could have done something in the 8th seed. But at the end of the day, they were not anything special. This Bulls team had so much expectation put upon them. Even to, to even to people that consider them a playoff team, they're currently disappointing at this point in time. So I do have to say, this just might be the worst Chicago Bulls week I have experienced on this channel. Very, very hard statement to make, but I do believe it's true. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Bulls show, turn notifications on, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls overall week that we have faced. How disappointed are you with the week that we faced? I've seen so many comments now, ladies and gentlemen, from other YouTube channels, from social media in general, obviously from my YouTube channel as well. And I think a lot of people maybe are overreacting. I don't know. Honestly, I feel like everybody is extremely frustrated. And at this point, I can't blame anybody for reacting the way that they are. I, uh, I've seen so many people saying, fire Billy Donovan. I can't, I guess, defend that anymore. I've heard a lot of people say, uh, trade DeMar, trade Zach, trade Vooch, trade everybody and rebuild built again. And I, as, as much as I don't believe that, I can't sit here and say that you guys are wrong right now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that might be an overreaction, I don't know. But at this point in time, I'm just feeling extremely frustrated beyond belief. And I do want to see some changes made by the Chicago Bulls team. Whether that's a coaching staff change, personnel change, I do feel like this team has massively disappointed thus far. And in all honesty, I just don't know how much worse it's going to get. I don't know if it gets any better than this. I don't know if it gets worse. And unfortunately, with this next upcoming week that we have to look forward to, I am very, very scared right now, ladies and gentlemen, about the, what the Bulls could potentially be facing. So, with all that being said, I don't want to keep this video too long. I know Bulls fans are suffering right now, and I don't want to pile on to many people's problems. But we are going to discuss Bulls Weekly like we do every single week. Through the hard times, through the good times, I'm always going to be a fan of this team, a fan of the Chicago Bulls, and all I want is for them to do their best. But if you can't support them when they're down, if you choose, do you want to pick maybe pick a different team or you choose, I guess, not to support this team when they're down, then it's going to be, again, it's one of the situations where if you don't support them when they're down, don't support them when, when, when they're winning either. you got to face the tough times with the good times as well. And by supporting them, I don't mean not criticizing. I don't mean not being upset, not being frustrated. I'm not going to be a supporter that just blindly follows this team in happiness and bliss. I will criticize this team when it needs to be criticized. And I think I've done a very good job of that. But again... This might just be the worst one of the lot. So let's look at the previous results. Nonetheless, we kick things off first with a game against the Denver Nuggets. And this was a game at home after a loss to the Pelicans the first time around. And we got absolutely blown out in this game, 126 to 103. Again, in my opinion, this is the worst loss of the week. And it came right at the very beginning of the week. And of course, the messages after the week did not get any better. But a loss at home, very, very bad. A blowout loss at home, very, very bad. And again, when the Bulls give up and the Bulls provide lack of energy and you hear, you hear the coaching staff and you hear Zach Levine, you hear DeMar DeRozan talking about how unacceptable it was, that proves to me how much of a bad loss this truly was. But it didn't get any better. We needed a response against the Pelicans. We needed a response in that game to try and fight our way through. A good first half, I would say dreadful second half as we lose this game 124 to 110. I think the score didn't even do us justice. I thought we were much worse than what the score actually showed, which again goes to show this Chicago Bulls team and the current level they are at at the moment. Their confidence is at an all-time low. Their effort, in my opinion, is at an all-time low. And unfortunately, again, this was a very, very terrible response uh, in terms of getting blown out at home to come back to New Orleans, a team with no Zion, a team that played a back-to-back 
the night before and they got absolutely destroyed, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This Bulls team got destroyed. The Pelicans destroyed us with all of those obstacles put in front of them. Very, very, very upsetting. And then obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the last game a couple of hours ago, we versed the Orlando Magic and again, more heartbreak. Uh, the heartbreak continues. We lost this game to the Orlando Magic 108 to 107 by Nikola Vucevic, Nikola Vucevic missing two free throws and Jalen Suggs obviously hitting a ridiculously good three to win the game for Orlando. Now, I made a game reaction and honestly, I'm not proud of that game reaction because I don't feel like I gave a proper analysis of that game. But that's just sometimes pure emotion. Sometimes I react based on pure emotion. I can't always be analytical every single time, all day, every day. I can't look at the stats every single game and explain to you why the Bulls lost. Sometimes it's very clear as day. And obviously, I feel like the one thing I do want to say is that Nikola Vucevic missing the free throws is bad. Yes, it is. Of course it is. But one thing I have to take, I, I guess, consider is that the Bulls were down 19 points in that game. The, Pal the or Magic, sorry. Sorry, I've just, we've lost so many games. I'm finding it hard to keep track of these days. But with the Magic, again, they rightfully deserve this win, in my opinion. We had a fantastic second half performance. And again, that might bring some people signs of hope that this Bulls team might be okay. But at the end of the day, we deserve to lose that game because we gave up a horrifically bad first half and we went down by 19 points not every not every game we can play catch up and win we've seen a lot of comeback wins for the bulls ladies and gentlemen but we can't make our living off of that and that's why as bad as as bad as vucevic's two free throws is as bad as me buying his jersey last night just for him to miss these two free throws and i do feel like that's some element of fate ladies and gentlemen but that's just me at the end of the day i can't blame the loss solely on vuce i blame the loss on this bulls team for going down 19 points against the Orlando Magic without their rookie and arguably their best player. So that's not very good by the Chicago Bulls. And if you play catch up, it's going to come back to bite you. Now, we've discussed the 0-3 Chicago Bulls this week. I'm actually going to skip the awards because in all honesty, this was the worst week of Chicago Bulls basketball I think I've ever experienced on this YouTube channel. And why should players get awards? Who? Why should players get player of the week for the week that we actually had? Who's going to be proud of earning the player of a week in an 0-3 with two blowouts and one buzzer beater loss? Tell me one player. If I say this player is the player of the week, he deserves the player of the week. He played excellent basketball. Do you really think that player is going to be proud or going to be honored to get a player of the week award? Even if they don't watch these videos and I don't really care if they do or don't, how many players are going to sit there and say, I am the player of the week. I deserve that award. I played really well this week. The fact of the matter is a whole bunch of these players should feel absolutely horrible with how they're performing right now. And me praising these guys and giving them awards this week is just not going to happen because not only do they not deserve it, I don't think the players earned it and I don't think the players would want it if they were here right now, ladies and gentlemen, and I was giving them a trophy or whatever for player of the week. None of these players would want it. And if they did want it, then it shows the type of character that they are because the Bulls are 0-3. The Bulls have won one game in their last seven. No team, no player deserves any sort of recognition of praise with this week. And they have to all be better. Our big three has to be better, of course. And again, a lot of people have lost faith in our big three. Our coaching staff has to be better. I personally don't think Billy Donovan is getting fired anytime soon. But our coaching staff has to be better, ladies and gentlemen. Not one person deserves that praise for the week that we've just faced. So we're going to quickly move on into, the, I guess, all of the games that we have to look forward to this upcoming week. I should say my must improve is the whole team. I think that goes as clear as day. The first game, ladies and gentlemen, we have to look forward to is a game at home against the Boston Celtics. Now, as I mentioned in the game reaction, I don't think we're going to come into the game against Boston and get blown out. Because the fact of the matter is, we seem to match up very well with Boston, and they usually are close to competitive games. But if I was telling you I'm confident that I'll beat the Boston Celtics or the Bulls would beat the Boston Celtics, I would be lying to your faces, and I cannot do that. I am very scared of this Boston Celtics team. Have you seen the way that they're playing recently? Recently, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of the teams that we've lost to, they have absolutely destroyed. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't mean we won't have, I guess, a good standing against them. But at the end of the day, 
I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm very positive the Bulls will win this game. I may have a feeling we'll come back and we'll have a better game overall, but I'm not confident we will win this game against the Boston Celtics. And then we turn to the Milwaukee Bucks away from home. In my opinion, this is the absolute worst time to be versing the Milwaukee Bucks. This is considered a rivalry game for the Chicago Bulls, ladies and gentlemen. And this is obviously the start of a very big road trip for us where we do go out west after this. We make a pit stop to Milwaukee. We verse the Milwaukee Bucks. We verse Giannis Antetokounmpo and that great team that eliminated the Chicago Bulls in last year's playoffs. And we are kind of down in the dumps, low on confidence, low self-esteem. All Bulls fans are furious at the moment. And we're going to be versing this Milwaukee Bucks team very soon. I'm not going to lie, I am much more petrified of this Milwaukee Bucks team than I am the Boston Celtics team, but I still feel like we'll find a way to lose both of them in all honesty. This is what I feel like about the Chicago Bulls. They're going to have to change my mind. They're going to have to start proving people wrong. And more time goes on, the less I believe that they can do that. It's up to them. They have the power in their hands. They have to play the basketball they need to play. And of course, we'll see how the reaction goes after that. But again, I would love to win this Milwaukee Bucks game. This one means more than the preseason game really meant for us. And again, I'm not sure how much faith I have for the Bulls to win it. And then obviously our first game out West, we're going to be playing the OKC Thunder. Now, OKC, when you look at their team, you think the Bulls have a chance. But realistically, we've lost to the San Antonio Spurs and we've lost to the Orlando Magic. Two teams that we saw, even the Wizards I would put in that conversation, but they're probably a, a little bit of a higher standard. Those three teams are teams that are not necessarily the best teams. Teams that do have flat records at the moment. Teams that, again, maybe you think they're not in the contention to be one of the top teams in the East. Yet, those are the teams we have lost to, ladies and gentlemen. You could even put Miami in that conversation with how their start to the season has gone. At the end of the day, it's not acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. And I do feel like in all three of these games, the changes changes do need to be made for this team. I think the starting lineup needs to be changed a little bit. Just switch things up and see where we go. It's time to experiment with this team while we have time to experiment with this team. Because if you're going to leave it late until the All-Star break and we're battling like this and we're struggling, we have no time to experiment. And that's something that we can't let happen. Maybe you time it's time to do those experiments now to see what stability we can bring to this team. I hope we can do that. And I'll tell you something else. We criticize a lot about other teams in the NBA. The Lakers have made changes to their team. The Lakers put a $40 million player on the bench for them to try and succeed. Now, ultimately, the Lakers team is not very good. I think they're having a much worse time than the Chicago Bulls, that's for sure. But all things considered, even the Lakers have made changes so early on in the season. So I don't have any sort of valid reason for Billy Donovan as to why he can't make switches and changes to this team. Because I've already seen it with one of the worst teams in the NBA thus far. And that's unacceptable for Billy Donovan. But again, that's the Bulls Weekly episode. If you liked it, great. If you don't like it, I apologize. But at the end of the day, I don't feel like I deserve to give any more of my effort on this Bulls team when they don't deserve that effort of me making these videos, me giving these awards, me giving the must improve, and everything of that nature. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. And again, I will apologize on behalf of the Chicago Bulls team. I personally have nothing to feel sorry for, but I don't know how many apologies you're going to get from the Bulls players and the Bulls coaching staff. You may get some, but I think all of them should come out and apologize for their performances as of late. And they've really got to figure it out. And we'll wait and see if they can or not. Again, by the day, by the minute, there are less and less people that believe that they will. So, what are the Chicago Bulls going to do? The ball is literally in their court. Or now, in, against the Boston Celtics, it's in their court. What are they going to do with it? Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care, and peace.